Today's video is going to be a big one because the Moanalua Valley Middle Ridge is one of our top three all-time favorite hikes. If its name doesn't sound familiar, you may also know it as the legal way to hike to the top of the Stairway to Heaven. The trailhead for this hike is located at the Moanalua Valley Park, and since this is pretty much an all-day hike, we were getting started before sunrise. One thing that you need to keep in mind about the parking is that you need to park in the neighborhood because they will tow your car if it's still in there when they're locking the gate. And another thing is to please be respectful to the residents. Even though you're most likely on vacation, please don't be blasting music or parking in a way that blocks driveways. After a quick shoe cleaning, we were ready to begin our hike. If you're thinking about doing this hike yourself, you need to know that this trail is strenuous with an overall distance of 10 miles and an elevation gain of 2,585 feet. This hike does its best to lure you into a false sense of security because the first two and a half miles seem like they're almost flat. You're actually going to be gaining about 400 feet, but you can hardly tell that you're climbing at all. You're also going to be coming to a series of water crossings. We did our best to keep track and I believe that we counted 17 of them. Depending on how much rain the island has been receiving lately, they could be full or they could be bone dry. Most of the crossings in the beginning have a fork with one side going up and over a bridge and the other side dropping down, so at least if there is water, you do have a choice to stay dry at this point. The trail will switch from dirt to concrete for a little bit, but this is short-lived and you will soon be back in the dirt again. Every time we've hiked this trail, we've encountered a pretty good amount of mud. So you're going to want to wear shoes that give you a good amount of traction, but also not shoes that you're hoping to keep clean. The scenery on this part of the trail is gorgeous, but as you'll see in just a little bit, it is nothing compared to the views that you get while you're up on the ridge line. Around the 1.8 mile mark, you'll get a tiny bit more elevation gain and you'll see this fork on the right. Keep going straight because that won't take you to the middle ridge. The wind was already starting to pick up at this point and we knew that we were probably in for some fairly nasty weather. We've done this hike twice now and both times have been in some pretty nasty conditions. You're also going to find that the water crossings no longer have bridges as you get a little bit further in, but some people have put stepping stones down. So if you have good balance, you can try to hop your way across. Here we are at the three mile mark and things are about to get crazy. You're not gonna turn off the trail at the sign, but you're gonna go about 20 yards further down and then make a left. This is another spot where you could possibly encounter some water, but luckily both times that we went, it was dry. As soon as you get to the other side of the river crossing, you are at the official beginning to the climb up the middle ridge. Things will be escalating really quickly at this point. You'll be gaining right around 1100 feet of elevation over the next mile. In addition to the elevation, the trail gets a lot trickier too. You'll be winding your way under tree branches and trying not to trip over all of the rocks and roots. We obviously recommend trying to do this on a day where it's not raining, because if you add mud into this equation, you're gonna be in for a long and hard day. We had plenty of trees to give us protection from the wind and rain at this point, but that all goes away in the second mile of the climb. Another thing that you need to watch out for is branches sticking out into the trail. We both banged our head on a couple, and if you're not careful or tiny like V, you can get your camelback hung up on them pretty easily. Pretty soon all of your hard work is going to be worth it because you're going to start to get great views on both sides of the ridge. This could be a big part of why this trail takes us all day to do. Even though you're looking out over the same valley from different heights, we can't help but stop and take in the view every chance we get. But be careful because along with those views come vertical drops that get bigger and bigger the higher that you climb. If you have a fear of heights, this is definitely a trail that you're going to want to skip. And if you could do us a huge favor and clean up after yourself and even others on the trail, Hopefully this just fell out of someone's backpack, but we picked it up anyways. It's pretty amazing how lush and green everything is in the valley. 
but it's pretty easy to understand why when you find out that they had 74 inches of rain here in 2022. Luckily, there are some areas that kind of flatten out to give you a small break from climbing, and if you need more of a break, you can stop and ride a tree pony. We aren't exactly sure what all of these trees are that we're hiking through. A little bit further up the trail, V found these little fruits that look like guava. If you know what they are, we are definitely curious, so let us know down in the comments. At this point in the hike, the trail becomes really overgrown, and you need to be careful because it's hard to tell where the edges of the ridge are. It's several hundred feet down to the valley floor at this point, and you don't want to find out the hard way. We are now starting to leave the cover of the trees and head out onto the more exposed ridge line. As you can see by the leaves right here, it's getting way more windy already. That can make for some really interesting times when you're on certain sections of the ridge that are only a couple of feet wide. On both trips up the ridge, there were a couple of occasions where I either had to grab onto V or she had to sit down to keep from blowing off the side. We still have quite a bit of climbing left to do and we're eventually going to end up way up on this peak right here. In just a second, we are going to be reaching our first rope of the climb up the ridge. And I wanted to give a small safety tip about using ropes on trails. When you find a rope on a hike, do your best to not put your full body weight on it. Just use it to help you keep your balance on the way up. You don't know how long that rope has been out baking in the sun and it would be catastrophic if you put your entire body weight on it and it broke. We always do our best to keep our videos as short as possible and to the point but it's just so hard with a hike like this because I really want to show you how beautiful and difficult this climb is. Even though it's really hard to do it justice in a video, but if you do end up deciding that you want to do this hike, we want you to have a really great idea of what you're getting yourself into. Now that we are out on the more exposed portion of the ridgeline, the views down the canyon are going to become epic. And the cool thing is, the higher you get, the better they get. But at the same time, the higher you get, the trickier this trail seems to get. V and I are always looking for new ways to push ourselves, and this trail definitely checks that box. If you don't have good balance, this is probably not the trail for you, because here's a shot of just how narrow the ridge can be in certain spots. Thankfully, the sections that are that narrow kind of come and go, and they don't last for too long. But when you do come to them, you definitely cannot help but be a little bit intimidated by the big drops. It seemed like the weather was getting worse and worse, but we were still having a great time. And here's some proof. See, I told you. At this point in the hike, we were going to be encountering quite a few more ropes, including the one that takes you up the sketchiest climb on the ridge. Even though the climbs up at the top are way taller and a lot more intimidating when you're looking at them from the bottom, once you get to climbing, they don't seem anywhere near as sketchy as this rope that you can see right here. This one is completely exposed and if you fall, you're going right over the edge. So do us a favor and don't screw it up. Even though there is a chance that you may encounter inclement weather on this hike, you need to be careful with your clothing choices. On our way up the ridge line, we spotted a girl on her way down wearing a baggy poncho. While it was giving her some protection from the on and off rain, the winds were nearing 30 miles an hour on this day and her poncho was flapping around wildly in the breeze. At one point, it looked like she was going to be doing an improvised wingsuit all the way back down to the parking lot. But luckily, it seems like she eventually figured it out and took it off. We are now onto some of the biggest climbs on the ridge. Just be ready because even though this one looks like you're going to be climbing all the way to the top, it is a false top. The good thing is that as the height of the climbs increase, so do the quality and numbers of ropes that you get to hold on to. 
Some of them had either two or even four ropes, which gave you a nice little bit of peace of mind because you didn't have to worry about the ropes breaking like I talked about earlier. One of the downsides to how much rain this valley gets mixed with the popularity of this trail is that we noticed there is a lot more erosion up towards the top. Things definitely looked a lot different than they did when we last made the climb about five years before this. As we started to near the top, we were getting a little bit concerned. The clouds were starting to roll in and we didn't want it to obscure that view, which is one of the main selling points of this hike. The wind was also picking up even more, which is why you see V dropping so she didn't get blown away. It's amazing just how fast the conditions can deteriorate here, and we could see other hikers trying to get down to the bottom as fast as possible. Are we having fun yet? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> At this point, the hardest parts of the climb were behind us, and we were just a short ways from the top of the middle ridge. At the time of recording this, we had no idea how much further we had to go because we couldn't see the radio tower on our left. That's usually the best way to gauge how close you are to the end of the climb. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost for getting that beautiful view of the stairs, the clouds parted as we reached the top of the middle ridge. You will be making a left here and heading towards the radio tower. You won't be able to see the stairs just yet because they're hidden behind the mountain. Some of these down climb sections can be a little bit slippery and tricky, so please be careful. It'd be a bummer to have made it all this way just to trip and fall down at the end. After a thrilling and adrenaline pumping climb up the middle ridge, we found ourselves once again at the radio tower and the stairway to heaven. Here's where things get a little bit interesting. It is not legal to go on the stairway to heaven. There are guards patrolling the base of the stairs and if you get caught down there, you could face fines of up to $1,000. You also need to be very careful if you're going to go down the stairs because as you can see they're very narrow and some of the sections aren't in the best of shape. That being said, the fate of the stairs has been in jeopardy for quite a long time now and there's been several threats to tear them down. That would be really sad because not only do these stairs have a ton of history, but this is also one of the most beautiful spots on Oahu in our opinion. If you don't know the story of the stairs, I'm going to do my best to give you a very quick history lesson. The Haiku stairs were built during World War II between 1942 and 1943. They were built to provide access to a top secret naval radio station that was tucked away in Haiku Valley. Not only was this a great hiding place for the radio station, but the high altitude gave it the ability to blast transmissions out to much longer ranges. It took the first climbers Bill Adams and Louis Otto 21 days to figure out how to get to the top of the mountain. Along the way up they pounded metal spikes into the rocks and they later used these to hang ladders. The ladders were eventually replaced with a wooden staircase and then the wooden staircase was eventually upgraded to galvanized steel. The building that you see here is the farthest that we've ever gone down the stairs. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this building was, and if you know, please let us know in the comments below. From the building, you can get a great look at the rest of the stairs. And just as a fun fact, there are 3,992 of them. After basking in the view for a bit, we started on our climb back up to the radio tower. One thing that we always take for granted on our way down the stairs is just how steep they really are. The average slope of each section is 30 degrees, and I swear that the steepest part feels like it's almost vertical. Climbing the stairs is obviously one heck of a workout, and I can't even begin to imagine how grueling it must have been to be one of the people building these. Here we are at that section of the stairs that I said feels like it's nearly vertical. The video doesn't do it justice, but you can kind of get an idea of how steep it is.
Our legs felt like they were on fire and we were able to just enjoy the sound of the wind whipping through the tropical plants because we didn't have enough oxygen in our lungs to say anything. But finally, we were able to make it back up to the radio tower. There isn't really anything left to see on the inside. Unfortunately, it's just mainly trash and graffiti. But if you're able to climb up to the top, that's where the true magic is. This does take some climbing skill and it doesn't hurt if you're a little bit on the taller side. It was a little reachy for V, but with a tiny bit of help, she made it up with no problem. Once you reach the roof, you will be right below the conic satellite dishes. I swear that this is the best seat in the house, and I had this really cool shot in mind where I'd swoop under the satellite dishes to showcase the view, but I ended up hitting my head on this bar right here. <laughs> to this day, I still have a scar on my forehead, but I'm no quitter, so we reset and did it again. This time I was a little bit more careful, and I think that it was worth it. If you brought your lunch with you, this is the perfect place to enjoy it. We didn't bring it this day, but V is quite a snack. And with that, it was once again time to say farewell to the stairs. We were a little bit sad because we didn't know if it was farewell forever, and we sure hope that it isn't. But who knows what the future has in store for the stairs. What we would love to see is for them to be repaired and turned into a tourist attraction. I know that we wouldn't hesitate to pay a little bit of money to climb them, and I'm sure a lot of other people would do that as well, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. This hike is an out and back trail, so you'll be heading back the same way that you came. But you're not going to want to miss this because the way back seems a whole lot sketchier. I can't stress enough how important good shoes are to keep you from sliding down the mountain, but that being said, we did see some locals doing this hike in sandals, which we think is pretty much insane. In an interesting twist of fate, Mother Nature must have known that we were done with the view, and the fog rolled right back in as we made our way back down the mountain. We did, however, turn around just in time to say one final farewell to the radio tower. Since you've already done this part of the trail, you know what to expect, but when you're staring down over 2,500 feet, this trail feels way more intense. The only good thing about the erosion is that it gives you a little bit of a slot to stay in for the bigger climbs. This feels a tiny bit more cozy because it's not super exposed. Even though the fog was rolling back in, we were pretty lucky because it wasn't obstructing our view down the valley. That's one of the things we love about this trail. You're not heading out to a beautiful destination, the entire hike is gorgeous. Mother Nature appeared to have been smiling on us at this point because the raging winds had died down. We definitely appreciated this as we went back across the narrowest and sketchiest parts of the ridge. We were really appreciating the clouds in the sky on this day. Sure, the thought of rain was in the back of our minds, but it was keeping the temperatures nice and pleasant and it also gave a really beautiful and soft light to the canyon. This lighting also made it easier to see as we made our way back down the sketchiest rope on the ridge. It is always nice to have that rope done. Even though there are still a ton of hazards ahead of you, that is definitely a big one to check off the list. The way back down almost seems kind of deceiving. Since you have a view that stretches all the way down the valley, you can see the neighborhood where the trailhead is. It looks like you're really close to being done, and if you were on a flat trail, that might be true. But it's gonna take a while for you to work your way down the ridgeline, so be sure to keep that in mind as well as how much daylight that you have left. It would also be a great idea to bring either a flashlight or a headlight with you just in case it takes you longer than you thought. I like the random things that we see on hikes, like this little leaf that was going absolutely wild in the wind. I'm not sure why, but it cracked both of us up. Once you start to see these tree arches, you are almost back down to flat ground. But as you saw on the way up, this is where you also need to keep your eyes peeled because the trail is going to start to become completely covered in roots again.
we had finally reached the bottom of the ridge line. And the funny part is that the flat road back is our least favorite part of the hike. I think it's a mix of the fact that the adrenaline is no longer there because you're not up on some sketchy ridge line and the fact that you are just beat up. We were counting down the water crossings and pretty much the only thing driving us forward at this point was the thought of some delicious shave ice. Our family had come along with us on this trip and they had actually dropped us off at the trailhead. We were using our Garmin inReach so they were able to monitor our progress. We highly recommend bringing a GPS tracker on strenuous hikes like these just in case you get yourself into trouble and you need to be rescued. Hopefully it's something that none of us will ever need, but it's nice peace of mind knowing that it's there. We both breathed a sigh of relief as we reached that final gate. Even though this hike is a major butt kicker, it is still one of our favorites and hopefully we'll get to do it again in the not too distant future. If you like hikes like these, stay tuned for next week because we will be taking on three peaks. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming wild adventures. What is your favorite hike on Oahu? Let us know in the comments below. And for all the information about this hike as well as other awesome Oahu adventures, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.